Welcome to Flora Brewing. I'm Sarah for those of you who don't know me. So today I am doing a series on how to start home brewing. It's Learn to Homebrew month, November, uh, also my birthday month. So I'm super excited to show you guys basically everything you need to know to get you starting homebrew. I'm gonna show you down to like the things that you would never even think I'm gonna show you just generally how to do everything. We're gonna start with some extract. It's the easiest way to begin. You don't have to worry about a mash. And it's such a fun hobby, and I love sharing my passion for brewing with all of you guys. When I started, I was super nervous about not knowing what to do. I was reading a bunch of message boards online trying to get like recipe uh, instructions because, you know, the homebrew recipes, they typically don't come with instruction manuals. It's a whole nother thing to learn all the steps that come into brewing. But once you do it a few times, it's so easy. It's just like making oatmeal. I, uh, when I first started homebrewing, I was at a beer tasting and someone who owned a homebrew shop told me that. And it is actually true. It is so easy, but there's certain things you need to know to make a successful beer. So I'm gonna get into all of those things with you guys today, and I'm gonna brew on this uh, More Beer Premium Homebrew Starter Kit. You can get this, I have the links below. We're also doing a giveaway uh, up to November 7th, which is National Learn to Homebrew Day. You can get one of these premium kits. You can also get like a $70 kit. I'll link to that one below. It's, it's a bucket version of this fermenter. Basically, the only difference you're gonna get is there's a kettle in here, which is eight and a half gallons. You can also use a three gallon soup pot. That's how I started. And it, it, this just has more stuff in it that you don't necessarily need, but like I don't have my three gallon soup pot anymore, so I had to get a new one. And uh, typically when you start out, you'll start using buckets to ferment in. This one has something called a Fermonster in it. It's uh, it's a clear fermenter, also plastic. Um, I've used them forever. I always suggest people start out with them because you can get them for like 30 bucks and they have a spigot and you can see what's going on inside and it gives you kind of the feel of a fermenter more so than just having a bucket. Like the bucket always feels very rudimentary, but once you get like some more equipment, you get more comfortable and then you, you know, Homebrewing is such an equipment like hoarder's paradise. You can spend thousands or you can spend 70 bucks to make good beer and you can make good beer in any of these kits. It's not that difficult as long as you follow some simple rules. So now that I've said all that, I'm actually gonna tell you some simple rules. My things that I swear by are temperature control in the fermentation. So fermentation is after we've done all of our boil and we've added all of our things and it's when the beer actually cooks and the yeast eat the sugars in the wort. Wort is the liquid that it, we make before it actually becomes beer. It's non-alcoholic. It's basically just sweet water or like barley tea kind of. And so during your fermentation, you want to keep a consistent temperature usually between like 72 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Uh, if you get higher than that, you can get off flavors. Off flavors can make your beer really bitter. They can make it taste like medicine. They can make it taste like cardboard. There's a lot of different off flavors that you can get if you don't follow these simple rules. Another rule is sanitization. So once your wort is cool, you need to make sure that everything that's touching it is sanitized. So that includes your hands. If you think your hands might touch anything that might touch it, it includes the fermenter. It includes the hydrometer, which is how we read our alcohol. It includes just anything that you might think that it's gonna, it's like even the scissors you use to cut open your yeast packet it, are gonna get sanitized. It's very important because there's yeast all around us. In this room, there's probably five or six or a hundred different kinds of yeast. So if you get those yeasts from your skin, you can ferment beer with the yeast on your skin or the yeast on the skin of an orange. There's also bacteria floating around in the air and bacteria is what we really don't want in there. You can have infections that like 
smell like vomit and you don't want to go anywhere near them, but you can also have infections that make up some of our wild cultured beers like a Bretomyces beer or just sour beer in general. Uh, it typically has cultures or wild yeasts or uh, bacteria such as lactic bacteria that does the souring. So those are my two main rules. I'm gonna tell you guys a lot more as we get brewing, so stick around. I'm gonna open this guy up, see what we've got in here, and I'll explain some of the equipment, and then we can actually start brewing on my stove. Okay, so here's our fermenter. It doesn't have its spigot in it yet. This kit is actually a lot nicer than the one I started out on. So we've got our bucket, bottle capper, bottle caps. So this is star sand. This is what we sanitize everything with. What is this? Cleaning tablets. You basically need a kind of a degreaser to get all the wort stuff off of it. There's a lot of protein in there that likes to stick to the side. Sugar. This is what we're going to use to bottle. Oh, cool. This is awesome. I'm a gearhead. I love getting new stuff. This is the valve that goes into the Fur Monster. Airlock goes in the top. Ooh, a thermometer. Mine, none of mine work. So, thermometer, good to have. Airlock goes in the top. So this, yeah, this is our bottling bucket. So once we, once we ferment, we'll transfer it into here. Um, I actually don't do this anymore, um, but when you bottle it, it's easier to do it in a different bucket because you can add the sugar into here. Um, but this valve goes on this guy. LME. I haven't done a thing in LME in a long time. Okay, so this is liquid malt extract. So it is the liquid form of dried malt extract, basically. It's just super concentrated wort. So if you were to do an actual mash, you could actually make this um, just by boiling off a lot of the water. And then this is our homebrew kit. We're going to make a uh, the American ale today. So I think this is a pale ale. Just American ale. We're almost at the election, so it's appropriate. So I mentioned temperature control. We have a stick on thermometer that we're gonna put on our fermenter so we can just monitor how hot it gets, which um, if you are in a warm climate. It is November, so hopefully no one's really struggling with this at this point, but try to keep your wort in a cold, dark place. Um, and then we are using Cali yeast. I've never used this yeast. Cool. It's by Cellar Science. And then this is our chiller. This is like a very low end version of this chiller. I have like crazy versions of this as well. Um, it still works though. So you're supposed to hook this up to a garden hose, but they also give you this adapter for your sink faucet, which is what I'm gonna use, which is awesome because I spent a long time trying to figure out a situation where I could actually get an adapter to a hose. And then this takes in cold water and it sits in your beer in the kettle, takes in cold water, push, pushes it out. I have another video on chillers up here you can see. I believe this is our hydrometer. Oh wow, I got smushed. My little hydrometer stand thing broke, but I have another one in here. So if you receive broken equipment, just send it back. So I have another hydrometer and stuff in there. Um, hydrometer is how you read your ABV. 
What else do we have? Tubing for bottling. Mash paddle. This is our kettle. So as I said before, you can just use a soup pot for this and add water in the end. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that because that's how I started. Um, but in this one, you can actually do a full batch. So if you get this kit, um, go ahead and add the full amount of water suggested. And I'm gonna add the valve to it. If you don't have a valve on this, you can just pour it. These mesh bags we're gonna use for our hops. It just makes getting the hops out easier. You don't want a ton of hop sludge in your fermenter. It's just unnecessary. And you're gonna have a lot of stuff at the bottom anyway. So if you get anything above your valve, it kind of sucks. Future Sarah here, we're actually gonna use these bags to steep our specialty grains as well, not just using them for hops. Uh, when you do an extract batch, a lot of times you'll get like caramel or crystal malts um, that don't actually need to go into a mash. So they give you a lot of color and sweeter flavors um, because they're already cooked, so they don't need to go through any conversion. And it's really easy to just steep them in this bag, kind of like a tea bag when you're heating up your water. Okay, so that looks like it's about it for what's in our kit. For those of you who get this kit, I'm gonna show you how to install the valve. The things that um, kits don't come with are typically uh, beer bottles. So you can save your own. Um, that's what I usually do. And a hot tip is that Racer 5, if you like that beer, their labels come off really easy. Like I'm not paid by Racer 5, I just love that beer and always use it because you can get the labels off with just like OxyClean. Simple, awesome, easy, free. Free beer bottles. And uh, the only ones that you can't really bottle are the short and squat ones. I mean, you can, but uh, it's kind of dangerous because they don't quite fit. Like a Lagunitas bottle isn't great. Okay, so I have the valve here. And there's a nice little description that makes it very easy. So this just gets a plug. So this would typically have a temperature gauge on it, just a screw in thermometer. I might have someone. But if you don't have one of those, you just put a stopper in. Okay, so to do this, you put in the threaded post. Get it like halfway in there and then you screw your ball valve on. And then there's a nipple on this one because you want to use it tubing to pour it into your fermenter. Or you can just dump it, sometimes I do that. See, what I should be doing is using Teflon tape. So you're gonna wanna use Teflon tape for your fittings. And there's a certain way you should put it on. I almost always screw up. Basically, you just want your tape to not be unspun by the way you're going to turn the valves. So once you've got your Teflon tape, you can just hand tighten this usually. And I'll just keep it from leaking. And then you can do the same for your valve. So it's gonna turn right, which means you wanna wrap it to the right. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just give this kettle a quick rinse and I'll meet you guys back in my kitchen and we can start brewing. So the brew day will be in the next video in a couple days and just wanted you guys to know, I have a Patreon. If you wanna support the channel, you can get all the videos early, get merch, 
uh, monthly happy hours, and ad-free videos, uh, just click the link above. And I want to thank my two newest patrons, Stamina Cola and, of course, Jenny Mermelstein, who I told not to join because she lives, like, right below me, right here. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your support, and I will see you guys next time. So we have a stick on, uh, we have a stick on thermometer. We're, thermometer? You have to kind of go in the opposite direction. And I'm pretty sure I did that wrong. Yeah, I did it wrong.